Hi hey you guys, here at ERS, uh, our rope access kind of stuff we're doing uh, combined with the confined space. We've just got some standard procedures uh, just going to go through. So we should all be aware, first of all, we're going to use a red rope and a white rope. The red rope is going to always be our safety line um, and the white rope is going to be our working rope. We're going to introduce a new concept of a blue rope which is now going to be our rescue rope. So we've got three different colored ropes to easily identify it. So the first thing we can do, we could set up a simple anchor. Uh, we could do a nice figure of eight in there. We could use a carabiner, pop that through into our simple anchor point, do that up. And there's our safety rope. The problem with doing this is once it's there, we can't do anything else with it. So what we're going to do is actually set up rig for rescue. Now, by doing a rig for rescue, what that actually means is if something goes wrong, we can use that same rope for rescuing. There's nothing wrong with it as it is, but we can't haul on that rope or do anything else. So if we set up a rig for rescue, really straightforward. Take this rope out of here. Just take our line out. The first thing we're gonna do is just do that standard stop a knot uh, in the ends there, so that That will be at the bottom of the uh, wherever we're working. Um, never have a clean end so that as we're coming down, if anything happened, our gear would lock onto that and we can't go any further. If we had a clean end and this wasn't touching the bottom, then it could go further. So all we're going to do is dangle the rope down. So this is just off the ground, so a few inches off the ground, which means it's not in any water um, and it's not going to cause any problems. So that would be our first thing. Hang that down there to where we want it. Now we could lock that off there, so we could use an Italian hitch as an example. Um, or what we could do is just use a straight pulley through there, pulley in there, lock that off. And now we need to terminate this end somewhere. So what we can do is use our ID, find another anchor point, doesn't matter where that is, our ID can go in, open that up. So that's the principle of where we're going. So we're going to have our 
uh, red rope and our white rope set up like that. And now what I'm going to do is go through our blue rope and we're going to set up some bigger mechanical advantage on our blue rope, which is going to be rigged for rescue. So what I'm going to do is set up a four to one. Now, if we are going to be pulling someone up um, outside, then having them in a horizontal plane, so keeping them nice and flat is ideal. But when we're using the confined space, we need them vertical to get up through that. So what I'm going to do now is go through setting up the Reeves stretcher that we can use in the horizontal plane or the vertical plane. Um, and then I'm going to go through the rigging for rescue using our blue rope to actually rig that uh, up so you'll kind of see it. So let's kind of take a pause there and then let's get the Reeves out. Okay, here we have the Reeves stretcher. We'll get it all out in a minute so you can see it all. Um, but one of the things you need to be aware of, if we're doing a vertical lift or a horizontal lift, we do then need to have a backboard to go with it. Now, the idea is we would have a solid backboard, but we can't always transport that. So if we're using the cars, the RRVs as an example, uh, we might not be able to. So what I'm going to use today is the scoop because the scoop can be fine folded in half and we can then use it to um, put inside the reefs. So let's get the reefs open. Let's see what we've got there. Okay, so in the reefs, when we open this up, we've got a nice package. Uh, the headlocks we're going to need, so these Velcro on as you can see there, so tidy, locked to one side. This is going to be the head, so we can actually use this um, as part of our hauling system. So we've got the, the headpiece there, so let's undo that for now. Instructions. Um, See where the head blocks go, chin piece, forehead, nice solid handles, anchor points at the top here. Uh, got the middle bits, anchor points down the bottom, and this is the strapping down here where we're going to slide the uh, um, solid backboard into, or on this occasion, we're going to put the scoop into it. So, all we're going to do is unclip, unveil, throw. And then we've got a pocket here, so that pocket goes all the way up. So let's just set up our scoop. set up a rope on the head and we're going to have red for head. 
So blue for shoe, red for head. So let's set up a quick rope down here. Um, I've got a blue leg, probably not long enough. So let's use this piece, it might be a bit too long, but we can always trim that down. So on here, I'm just gonna go for a re-threaded figure of eight. Around here, I know that's not gonna slip or go anywhere. side um, I'm gonna do an overhand knot in the middle there uh, come up so I'll be happy with that make that a little bit shorter So um, just an overhand knot on a bite, we're going to attach to that. So I'm going to put another figure of eight down this side. I want them about the same length, so let's just adjust that so that it is exactly the same. There's our figure of eight. Let's re-thread that. So there's our rigging, uh, just going to make sure every part of the knot is tight. Uh, as we pull up, it's going to kind of take a bit, but that's going to be our um, glue to shoe. So that's going to be down the bottom there. Um, I don't need this length so we can get rid of this. We'll get rid of that towel and then I'll probably leave this one on here permanently. So we'll look at doing that in a second. So there's our one there. Um, yes, we can go straight onto the headpiece here, but I'm also going to set up red to head onto these eyes in exactly the same way I've done down there. So I'll fast forward this and see you in a second. Okay, so Red to head, I've done exactly the same there, just talk you through it. Um, I did a re-threaded figure of eight here. I've done an overhand knot on a bike here, re-threaded figure of eight here, um, and then I've left them tails. So I'm happy with the length of this. This is gonna be one of our main anchor points, and we're gonna use this as our safety um, as well. So we've got kind of two bits on there. Um, as I said, this is going to be for the forehead, the blocks will go in, chin strap, this then, this section is for the arms. So what we're going to do is once the casualty is in here, we lay this section over first, then we velcro it on. The arms are on the outside of the black straps and on the inside of the yellow straps. Okay, so uh, when we're doing the arms, make sure black, the arms are on the um, outside of the black ones, inside of the yellow ones. Coming down to the leggings, again, just going to put the legs in, wrap it around, velcro it up, and this is uh, good to go. So we've got all the black straps to hold them in. So we put our mannequin in here in a second. If we're going to do a horizontal lift, um, we can then use these two, but we would need something in between, or we can have it on two separate pulleys. What I'm going to set up now is a 
four to one mechanical advantage, we're mainly going to be looking at the confined space. So we're going to be looking at doing this as a split four to one. So we need some rope grabs in there as well, some progress catchers um, to go in here. And what we're going to do essentially is have a pulley on the bottom one. So blue to shoe, we'll set up first. Red to head will be the second pulley, we're set up second. So we set that up and we can look at this vertical lift. Okay, so let's get some equipment out and we can start um, hauling this patient up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be using the blue rope. As you can see, I've already set up the red rope and the white rope. Um, the blue rope's going to need to have a couple of anchors and bits and pieces on there. So I'm just going to set this up now. Um, and what we're going to use is a rigging plate and some single pulleys with captures on them. Um, and I'll show you how all that kind of works now. Okay, so all I've done so far is set up a third anchor, uh, which has got a rigging plate on it, so we can get multiple anchors off of the one plate. And um, also on my red rope, I'm just going to change this. Let's just turn around. On my red rope, um, I'm going to put in a figure of eight down here. All I'm going to do is a simple figure of eight and then that is going to go to the head. I'll show you that in a second. But what I'm also going to do is use an ASAP to go through here. So I'm just going to anchor that in, do that up. Check the direction. Remember, we're working upside down now, so that's going to go in there. Okay, so just test that, make sure that works. Now, the idea is with setting this up, um, the head end is going to be on safety. So that uh, bit is going to be on here and it will just work its way up. So if anything happens and the whole system fails, as this kind of pulls down, that will lock off. And as that locks off, then it kind of is a backup as a safety. But what I've also done is left the ID down the bottom because um, we're going to rig for... Um, we're going to rig for rescue, so because the ID is still down the bottom, I can set up a 3 to 1 really quickly, and I've got my equipment ready to go. So if I wanted to set up a quick 3 to 1, I've got my rope grab and a pulley there, and I can easily set up a 3 to 1. So that's our extra bit of safety, is the um, ID, and I've put the... Um, Figure it okay, through the top here now. So there's our extra figure of eight, which is a little bit of slack in the system. So that's just going to go through there, rethread it all. So good 10 centimetres hands whip there, make sure we pull every section tight, uh, looking at the load strand, making sure the load strand is on the top, making it easier to undo the knot after. So there's our safety coming through our space hat, back down to our ID. Now this also means we can lower the 
um, stretcher on this system here. So have a look there. Perfect. Okay, let's get this blue rope set up. So there's a few different pulleys and stuff we need to set up to get our four to one uh, mechanical advantage. So first of all, because it's a four to one, we need to terminate the end of the rope. Um, I could do a number of things for this very simply. I'm just going to do a stopper knot, that will slide up, that is terminated. So because this is a four to one, uh, we need to terminate at the anchor point. So that's all I've done there. So we've terminated it. I'm now going to take uh, blue to shoe, red to head, um, and we'll bring our stretcher in so you can see that. So my first end come down to a pulley which is on the feet. So let's bring this down to here. So from the terminated end, I'm just going to come down. This is that end I set up. Rope goes through into my carabiner. Blue to shoe. So that was the first one I set up. So that all it is is a simple pulley down on the shoe end to the blue end um, of this uh, stretcher. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm now going to keep working that rope up. So let's see, let's go back up to the point here. And this is where I'm going to have my first progress um, device. So as this comes back up, let's get some more blue rope out. So we've just got the pulley down the bottom. Uh, on here, I'm going to have another pulley, but with a progress catcher or a rope catcher on it somewhere. So I'll put the other pulley. Okay. So I appreciate we're working over this red rope um, at the moment, but uh, we can see that. So. I'm just going to put a pulley in here. It says. Up to a pulley. And that is going to clip in. this rope. So I'm just going to use this here. So that means the rope will slide that way, but not that way. So that will do me. So I'm happy with that. So this is a made kind of catcher. So if I ignore the red rope for a minute, as I pull in, I can pull the stretcher up. It's not going to come back down, but I want some slack in it. So let's take that out and let's get the slack. Okay. So there's our first one, just for simplicity for the moment, I'm just going to take the red rope off our safety and so you can just see clearly the blue rope at the moment, let's just get rid of that. Okay, so just to talk you through it again, we started off by terminating the rope with a barrel knot um, into our rigging plate. That then come all the way down blue to shoe. So we went down to the foot end of the stretcher and we put just a pulley, nothing else. The rope then went back up to that rigging plate and we had um, a kind of a rope grab in there, so the progress capture. On this occasion, I've used a, a chest crawl, it doesn't really matter. Now the rope comes down and I'm now going to go to the head end. Okay, so let's have a look at here. Now at the head end, this is just going to be another single pulley. 
So nothing fancy here. So the final bit of it was a progress capture, that red one there, which I've put in. So what I'm going to do now is haul this up. If I wanted to, as an extra bit of backup as well, I could now take the other end of the rope, and I could, the blue rope, and I could put another ID into the system. And by putting another ID into the system, that would then um, help uh, with a backup for lowering it if I needed to, but don't forget I've already done that on the red one. So just to talk you through it one last time, I'll pull it up. The blue rope started here, terminated, and it come all the way down through a pulley, so blue to shoe, gone to the feet ends. That come back up, gone through another pulley, but we've got a progress capture up here, so a locker, so it will lock it off. That rope come down, red to head, through another pulley, all the way back up, through another capture, and then this is my holding bit. So this is a four to one. Look what happens when I pull it up. So as I'm pulling, it's a really easy pull. Obviously there's no weight in it at the moment. Now, I want the head end to come up first, and it is naturally doing that, but it's obviously gonna take some of the foot as well. I can help it by pulling it up, whatever I need to do, but if I let go at any stage, these two have locked off, so that's not going back through, that's not going back through. If I wanted to pull the feet up a little bit more, I could, by pulling this up, it would lock off on that side and not on this side. So I could change the angle, or if I want to get more, as I pull it up. Now what's going to happen now is it's going to basically pull the head end all the way up to the uh, equipment. Now it's at the equipment, it's going to keep going up and up and up, and you can see how this is going to go into a vertical lift from where it is, and it will keep pulling. When I get to the top, what I can actually do, because I want to take the headpiece out, we can, um, because this one is going to be locked off as well, so now this has come out of the confined space, we're going to undo this, so we just take that back, now just the headpiece will come down, but that is still on a 2 to 1 at that end, so if that was still in the confined space, we can pull the feet through, locks off, Jobs are good. So it gives you a bit of an idea. If we take that out as well, we can flatten it off 
and we've got a um, uh, horizontal lift there and we can kind of keep it balanced going up but this isn't the best for it uh, and then I've got nothing here to lock off until I drop that progress catcher back down and then it will hold it like so okay that's the theory of this lift we can do a horizontal lift but it's not brilliant this split four to one is for the vertical lift so the only way i'm really going to show you this properly now is i'm going to set everything up with a mannequin in it a weighted mannequin and a tripod and i'm going to haul up through a confined space so i'm going to get everything set up and then um, i'll see you in a minute Okay, I've um, abseiled down into the confined space, uh, I've got the medical kit down here, um, I've had the stretcher lowered down, I've got my comms and everything else, now I'm going to load my patient into the stretcher um, and this is going to take a little bit of manual handling, so we are going to do the best we can, we may have a collar on our patient, uh, we may have had to use additional equipment, traction sling, pelvic binder, etc. Don't forget, if we could have, we would have been hauling him straight off his harness and straight up um, from there. There's a fair old weight to this now, so just going to get him. So his head's in the right place. We're now going to secure him in, making sure that this uh, blue to shoe is on the outside. So that's important. So we'll just leave that around there for a moment. Arms out for a moment. Um, I'm just going to start with the legs. So securely wrapping the legs around. There's the Velcro. I've now got these straps which I can use just working my way up strapping it in nice and snug there just tuck my ends away that there's the blue for the shoe happy with all of that now coming up to the arms um, which that should have been on the other side of it so I've just got to pull that through so we start off with the arms out velcro against him nice and snug there. Um, the black one is going to be uh, against the body. Again, just working our way up. Outside, uh, place straps on the outside so we can remember that. 
So we're nearly done. Last little bit. Head blocks. You can see these just velcro on in a standard way. Uh, chin one and forehead one. So this forehead strap. Loosen that a little bit. like to do them together. Chin strap is just going to need to come up. May have a collar on as well remember at this stage. Okay we're ready to go. So I'm in the confined space. I'm now going to um, get my rope set up and then we start hauling um, from there. So I've rigged the same system here on a confined space. So what we've got is our entry, which you can see is uh, quite small. There is a ladder there, but what we've done is we've set everything up um, as we would rig for rescue. So on the tripod, we've got the setup at the top here. And if we just have a look, uh, we've got two main anchor points on the tripod. One of them has got the safety rope, which I've already put the ASAP through the same as before. And then I've used a rigging plate, which has got our white working rope. And then it's got our blue uh, rescue rope. And all I've done is brought them down to a separate anchor point down here, where both the working rope and the safety rope are running through an ID. And I've just done a slippery knot to lock it off. But I've also got a uh, pulley and a grab just so I can set up a three to one very quickly if we needed to. Um, so in essence, these are just locked off and not gonna be used, but if we needed to use it for rescue, it's already rigged for rescue, so I can straight away set up three to ones on both of those. But a bit we're gonna concentrate on now is this blue rope, uh, which I've kept in a bag so that most of the rope's in there, and this rigging plate, if we have a look, I'll just come around this side, have a look at this rigging. Okay, so we've now got our um, rescue rope that's come down to the bottom with our two carabiners on. So let's just make sure we put the blue one here, blue to shoot. So that's going to come down, clip that on, blue to shoot is done. And then we have got... Red to head, all that twist out, that's going to be above the patients. That's where we're going to go, so that's going to come above their face, so just be aware of that. Lock the carabiners off, and just as that extra bit of safety, um, as we said before, I'm just going to do a re-threaded figure of eight on that red. Um, and this is going through the uh, ASAP at the top. So this is my extra bit of safety that I've got on here. So everything has been doubled up. Pop that through there. So everything's tight on there, everything's tight on there. Um, when we start to haul this up, uh, we'll start to see it moving. So I'm going to leave that there and we go up to the top and we start hauling it up. Okay, so we're all ready to haul. This is 
my hauling rope as I'm pulling up on this. Um, I need, now need to lock off both progress catches, but they're both locked off. I'm going to start to haul up, and it's a four to one. If I was worried about the mechanical advantage, to so say I can put an ID in, an extra uh, three to one on the top of this. Um, but as I start to pull up, I've also got to manage the red rope to pull it through uh, on the ID there as well. So let's start hauling. And as I'm hauling up, just a bit of rope management, keeping our rope nice and tidy. So as I'm hauling up, all I'm doing is putting the rope straight into the bag. Um, we're going to do some rope management over the other side. So because this red rope is running through the ASAM, I'm also going to pull it through the ID. So just going to open it. I know it'll auto lock, but we can make sure that goes through. So there's my rope management uh, on there as well. So let's carry on hauling up and what we will see is the head end of the stretcher coming up first. So let's leave the camera there. So we'll start to haul. Get that rope management going. Hauling up and I can see down below that the stretcher is now in that vertical plane coming straight up. Some rope management. Make sure we're pulling that through. And this is where as a team it would be a little bit easier because we can keep pulling this uh, through. So as you can see, the stretch is starting to come up now. Um, just doing some rope management on that red rope. Make sure that's pulled through. And we're going to look at which way we want this to face. So the white rope is not being used at all on this. Everything's on the blue rope, but we can see how the red to head has come up first on that uh, capture and the blue one is still coming up. So let's pull a bit more. So this is the bit now where we can't go anymore. So if we just had a vertical lift on the standard four to one, we're stuck here. But because we've done a split four to one, the idea is we can now take off the top progress catcher and start to lower the head down. And then we can still use a two to one to pull up the feet because that's still on a progress catcher. So that's not gonna go anywhere. So let's just have a little look at that. So on here now, I've got this in place. This 
is the progress capture. Um, second one is locked off so the feet are not going anywhere. I have ended up with a little bit of a twist uh, kind of in there. But this is where I can take this off at any of these levels really, it doesn't really matter. But I do need to take some of the weight to do it. So this is where I actually want this now into an ID so that I can actually lock that off. So that's what I'm going to do very quickly. It's just pop that rope, that blue rescue rope, into an ID, and then I can use that to uh, lock it off. So, we've got a separate anchor here. Thank you. 
this one. Okay, progress. Capture. And now we got that. Both progress captures are off. Out. Blue rope can come off. It's blue to shoe. It's done with. Red to head. It's done with. Just going to put them together. Um, pull the system back through. Keeps it all tidy. to go for the uh, next one. Um, patient can be carried away now uh, just on the stretcher and jobs are good. And excellent. So let's just finish off. Um, so we've got the reeves, we've got the scoop inside there, we've got blue to shoe, red to head and essentially we set up a split four to one. So we had a pulley on the blue to shoe, a pulley on the red to head, and it was all up here on the top of the tripod where we had the rigging plate and we um, terminated the rope as well as we had two um, progress captures. Uh, the first one coming from the feet, the second one coming from the head. And then after that, we had an ID in the system just as that extra backup and we needed to use it just to take the weight of the patient. So that's how we can do a vertical lift out of a confined space area using the tripod. Okay, so we're just going to set up a standard four to one um, using two double pulleys. Remember, when we use double pulleys, we must use both sides, we can't use just one side. So because it's going to be a four to one, the first thing we're going to do is terminate the rope at the anchor end. So, so just going to terminate the rope uh, down at the anchor end. So this is going to be the anchor up here. And we're then going to come down into our pulley or around our pulley. So that's in there. Side uh, come around. So there's our two to one at the moment. All right, back up a 
again. Back up again. And there is our standard four to one. So not a split four to one like previous, just a normal four to one. So the ropes around the trolley. This one's gonna go to the load. So that's gonna go down to the load. This one is gonna come up to the anchor point. So there's just a quick and easy setup there. Um, if we wanted to put a, uh, a lock in it, what we could do is have a traveling lock here. So as the rope pulls through, it goes, but it won't go back on itself. Uh, but on this occasion, because I'm going to be lowering, I don't want that because I want it to kind of open up. So what I am going to do is put an ID into the system so we can use this. And I'm going to have a separate anchor point for my ID. Um, so the ID will run. thing we're going to do is just because we've got the four to one set up up there is on the red ends we're just going to uh, put a ASAP as a backup safety. So let's set up our uh, ASAP on there. We can just do exactly the same as before. We do a figure of eight and we tie that onto the headpiece and then we're going to lower that all the way down. Just make sure that it's low enough. Find that length on there. Um, so, just because of the length of the rope on this one, um, I'm just going to use the white rope just as our safety for today. Um, just because the red ropes. Goes through there. So again, just make sure your load is going the right way into the ASAP. Remembering we're working upside down in this configuration. into position. Um, on this 
configuration then our four to one is going to come to the head um, and we're just going to lower straight on that safety this is the one running to the ASAP so if anything goes wrong it's just going to capture in the ASAP so this would normally be our red rope but uh, for today we're just going to use our white rope just because of the length of it I've got my blue rope in here um, and I'm going to attach the four to one up to the top on there. Okay, so at the moment we've just got a standard four to one um, that is hooked onto the top there. That is going up uh, to our anchor point, coming back down to an ID, and then we've just got the white rope as an extra bit of safety um, on there. So, taking the white rope, just a bit of rope management, I can take the weight this ID Okay, so there's our ID coming up to a double pulley which is on our anchor. That is then going down into another double pulley um, to lower our patient down. So now I can manage the ID, I can lead out, just finding spot
So what we've got is our ASAP now, which is the safety as locked, but because we've got a four to one mechanical advantage, we can then haul it back up on this system, lock it off on our ID, and then that releases the other rope, which means our ASAP now can be uh, rope managed so it can run nice and freely. So we can manage it through both systems because we're already lowering on that four to one. Okay, let's get him lowered down. Is that I can very quickly set up an additional three to one on top of this. So I can quickly put a hand jammer on there, an additional pulley. jammer has gone as high up as we can. I'm now going to haul the hand jammer down. So on the pulley, so this is our classic 3 to 1. Make sure it's all running through the ID. And as I come down, it will auto lock. But because I've got my classic three to one there and then I've got my four to one coming down there I've actually got a 12 to one mechanical advantage holding this up so just remember the four to one whatever drop you've got you've got to times it by four plus then we're managing it down the bottom so we're timesing it by about five or six here but it does mean we can very easily Dismantling our three to one. They're not going anywhere because they're on the ID. 
Z, which will auto lock, although we can obviously lock that as well. So all of that weight is back on my ID, and I can now lower it down. And we've still got the four to one to lower it down. You may need to manually help the patient out. So we're back down to the ground, um, now we can take everything apart, take our 4 to 1 apart, take our patient out of the reeves, take the scoop out of the inside of the reeves and off we go. If we want to, and we're going to use this as a stretcher, we've got handles for the team, so we could do a four person lift off of these handles, um, other handles are by the head here. Um, so we can leave them in the stretcher if we need to and take them out. We can't really get the scoop in and out when the patient is in it. So I'll just dismantle it now and that's the end of this little video. And then to finish packing away the reeves, all we're going to do is take that scoop out of the inside. So we've just got the clips. That scoop comes out. And just 
remembering we can fold that spoon so it can go back into the vehicle. Um, with the reeves, we just tuck everything in to make it all nice and neat. With our, um, all of our loops, they're all on these nice little elastics, so these go round. So from this side, it's always best if we make these to their longest, so they're always at the longest, and then we can just roll it up. And as we roll it up, when we come into the end, there's this nice little elastic just to hold everything together. And it just keeps everything nice and neat, ready to go for the next time that it needs to be used. But what we can do at the beginning of when we're rigging for rescue, we can get this set up so it is ready to go at any given time. And we don't have to then mess around getting it out. Um, and that may be by putting the scoop in, getting it ready. Although, for a team, it doesn't take long to put this together, remembering that the actual um, solid backboard would probably be a little bit better than the scoop, but then that depends on transportation and what we've got available to us. So we just tap this in, tap this in. ready to go again uh, back in the vehicle um, obviously we wipe down clean ready for the next time